Hi, this is John Hart from Town & Country Compounding. I'm here with our office manager, Jill Donato, who happens to also be my sister. And today we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, vitamin D levels. And a lot of people are interested in vitamin D because um, there has been some speculation that uh, vitamin D, adequate vitamin D levels could be used to um, prevent coronavirus. And I can say there is no, there's no definitive study that that is true. I know that they are testing that currently, but there are no peer-reviewed articles on that. But they are testing it, so in the future, we hope to know that. We do know, though, that uh, like a third of the Americans are or have low vitamin D levels. And we also know that, you know, vitamin D regulates our immune system. Most people think of it only as increasing calcium, you know, for their bones, so to prevent osteoporosis, particularly in women. But um, we knew, know it does regulate our immune system. And it upregulates it, and also, it, interestingly, it uh, is used to prevent uh, overactivity of the immune system. So it's this overactivity of the immune system that causes that cytokine storm that we see in COVID. And it's this, um, you know, actually this uh, cytokine storm that causes the acute respiratory distress syndrome, which has been fatal to many patients who were hospitalized with COVID. So certainly it is appropriate to maintain, we can say, an adequate level of vitamin D. And again, this is uh, John from uh, Town & Country Compounding. We do have a blog on our website, tccompound.com, discussing vitamin D. And you can please go there and take a look at that if you want more information. But we wanted to kind of go over that today. And we're also actually... We have these uh, tests here available, and we're actually going to uh, do a test on Jill because she's interested in finding out what her vitamin D level is. Now, <clears throat> interestingly, in the old days, you know, when we talk about the immune system, which is why there is an interest in uh, vitamin D and COVID, you know, grandma used to give uh, kids the old tablespoon of the cod liver oil. Cod liver oil is rich in vitamin A and vitamin D. Uh, we were kind of joking that uh, would you rather you know, take a tablespoon of cod liver oil, or would you perhaps rather take a, you know, a vitamin D supplement? This is one that we have uh, private labeled for us here at Town & Country. We also have uh, by Pure Encapsulations, which is another brand that we routinely recommend to patients. The interesting thing is that uh, vitamin D, uh, the, the food sources, are they're not, you know, a lot, or they're not the typical foods we eat. Uh, high levels are found in uh, beef liver, which is probably not on most people's dinner plate. Egg yolks, you know, so yes, egg yolks are more common, and, and cheeses, but uh, there are fortified foods, you know, that have vitamin D, but we usually do not get enough vitamin D from our diet. And the other thing, you know, I forgot to mention was vitamin D, even though we're calling it a vitamin, it's, it is a hormone. So vitamin D, or the hormone, uh, vitamin D, or in this case, cholecalciferol, is a hormone just like estrogen or progesterone in a woman is a hormone or testosterone is a, is a hormone in both men and women or, uh, you know, thyroid is a hormone. So it is a hormone, but we do call it a vitamin. And some of the things that, uh, we, we know is that even though our food supply might be low in vitamin D or the foods we eat are, are not the foods typically fortified with vitamin D. I mean, there are foods like cereals and milk and that that are fortified that you can get you know, vitamin D levels from. But um, other reasons we have low levels or older adult, adults typically have lower levels, uh, people with darker skin, because we produce vitamin C, uh, not vitamin C, excuse me, vitamin D in the body by uh, sun exposure. So exposing our, ourselves to sun. The <clears throat> Also um, staying inside. Now with COVID, a lot of us have been staying inside longer. So that could be what's uh, promoting lower vitamin D levels that we're seeing. Also, um, if you've had gastric bypass surgery, uh, pollution will tend to uh, kind of cause, you know, lower levels of vitamin D. Uh, so all the things that, you know, we're all typically exposed to. So it's nice to be able to, you know, know what your your level is. And typically when people would ask us, because we see vitamin D levels from, uh, not vitamin, but dosages of vitamin D from 400 units. I've seen patients take up to 10,000 units. There's a prescription vitamin D for 50,000 units. Now, certainly those higher strengths we do not recommend taking unless you know what your vitamin D level is. Uh, the old days when you routinely went to your doctor and your doctor sent you to your lab, you could, uh, you know, you could get that level and it, and it was very easy. But now in today, the way we are practicing medicine with uh, more and more of uh, telemedicine, uh, we're not seeing our doctor, so it's harder to get that drug, uh, that blood draw directly there in the office. And also what we're finding is that even some patients are nervous about going to 
you know, to the lab to have their blood drawn. So ZRT is a company we work with. They do saliva testing, and they also do what's called dry blood spot testing. So dry blood spot is what we're talking about to test your vitamin D. We do have the kits available here at Town & Country, uh, again, on our blog or our website, which is tccompound.com. You can uh, go and uh, see information about how to obtain the test. You can call here at 447-2020, our area code's 201, because we're in New Jersey. And you can speak to Maria, and she can make um, arrangements to either ship you a test kit so you can do this at home, or, you know, you can drive up and we can deliver it to you outside in your vehicle. We are still closed to the public uh, because we are a sterile compounding pharmacy here in Ridgewood, New Jersey. And the thing is that it's blood, you know, the, the blood is dried. So what happens is once you send it to the lab, they actually punch out the little spot of blood and they rehydrate it. Once it's rehydrated, it's also like, it's like testing serum. So it really is like a serum uh, test. And normally, like, uh, what we see is your vitamin D level you'll see as uh, nanomoles per liter. Don't really worry about a nanomole. But you want to see what your number is. Typically, below 30 is considered vitamin D deficient. They say 30 to 50 would be adequate. So many patients would go and they would get a 35. And, you know, they think, oh, I'm in the normal range. Most articles that you read now or most physicians that you speak with, they consider a person who has an adequate vitamin D level to be above 50. So that's what we like to see our patients shoot for. And if we know what your level is, we, it's easier for us to recommend a dosage of the over-the-counter, you know, vitamin D to take. This, this uh, bottle here happens to be a 1,000 units per capsule. So with that being said, we're going to do the test. Uh, now, uh, what we want to do is... Jill's done this already, but you wash your hands, good soap and water. And the idea is what you want to do is use some hot water, because the hot water helps get the blood flow to the fingertip. And Jill's already done that. And you can also, you can uh, shake your hand like you were shaking down a thermometer. That helps get blood to the uh, fingertip. And one of the things we were, we were kind of joking about was that... Um, <laughs> Jill just recently had a hip replacement, which she's my sister, and it's not violating HIPAA because she told me I could mention that. So she's interested to know what her vitamin D level is because, you know, that's going to help with the bones to heal after the surgery. Uh, also, to, you know, if you're not a good bleeder, you can um, kind of do some jump, jumping jacks to try to get the blood flow going. But since she, yeah, Jill, with her recent hip replacement, we decided she should not uh, be doing jumping jacks. <laughs> And as a disclaimer, because Jill's been following the social distancing rules, she has not gone and had her nails done, so she just wanted <laughs> to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, look bad. <laughs> they, they look bad. She she thinks she said that she thought people were going to maybe think she's biting her nails, but she is not. <laughs> you know, like, you know, her like many other women just haven't been able to get to the nail salon. No. So she's washed her hands. What we do is you take a alcohol swab that's collected, uh, included here in the kit, and you kind of. Just the fingertip. You Usually the index finger or the uh, ring finger. And what you want to do is the side of the finger. There's less nerve endings than the, the middle portion of your finger pad. So that's why you go for the side where you're going to use a lancet to draw the blood. You let that, you can shake it, Jill, just to kind of let the alcohol draw you off. Not that you can, you know, this is the included lancet. But if you uh, use the lancet while the alcohol is still on your fingertip, it can come, sometimes sting a little bit more. But that's the lancet we're going to be using. And this is the blood spot card from ZRT Laboratories. If you open it up, you'll notice that there's 12 spots. I'm going to fold this top back. There's 12 circles on there. That's the target circles for the blood. Now, if you're doing, like we are here today, vitamin D, you really only need to fill four of those circles. Uh, if you were using this blood spot to test other hormones, there's a, you know, many different hormones you can test using blood spot. You may have to fill more of those, but here at Town & Country, uh, if you call uh, and speak to Maria at 201-447-2020, we can uh, advise you on what tests you are doing and also how many of these blood spots you would need to uh, fill to get the adequate amount of uh, sample to send to the lab. I usually recommend that you take this little card, take a little little tape. This is just to make it easier. You can tape it to like, you know, a, a countertop in your home because most people will be doing this in their home. 
I just have a little acrylic scan that we've uh, taped that card to. So it makes it easier when the finger is pricked to, uh, you know, actually kind of get the blood to drop on there. The idea is you want to fill in about three quarters of the circle with a drop of blood. You don't want to try to get a little bit of blood, just, you know, smear it on there. You want it to kind of be a drop and then, you know, touch it to that inside of that circle. And a good rule of thumb is fill up about three quarters of that circle or a pencil tip eraser is a good uh, indicator of an adequate amount of blood that's on that circle there. So our finger is dry. This is your lamp set, which is included in the kit. You just pull this top off. If you notice, there's a little white portion there. We're going to push that against the side of Jill's finger. It will click. Hear that click? What you do is there's a little sterile gauze. You take that first little drop of blood and you just wipe it away with the sterile gauze. You want that first drop of blood wiped away. Now Jill's going to try to like milk her fingertip to get that blood coming to the fingertip. If you have any uh, difficulty with that, you can actually uh, actually kind of, um, you know, wipe with the gauze a little more vigorously. It will help get that blood flow. Jill's now okay. give me a bigger drop there. You know, just milk that finger, like rub your there thumb down the whole finger there. There, that's there a good drop of blood. Okay. That's big. Yep, yep. And just, yeah, you don't have to rush. Just work to get that drop of blood there. Okay, got a good drop. Yeah, so the idea is get that good drop of blood hanging before you try to just uh, smear it on there. You can see she has those drops of blood there. There you go. That's better. Okay. And again... Good. Huh. A little more. There you go. So again, for the vitamin D, four is okay. So she's uh, filled in, you know, three quarters of the. Okay, there we go. She's filled in three quarters of the uh, spots on there. The other thing you can do is you look at the back here, and you can see that it's soaked through on the back. So that's what you want to see. Like you filled, you know, like about three quarters of those circles or the pencil tip eraser. Uh, then we have a little included band aid here. We can bandage her finger up. And it doesn't really hurt. You know, we were worried she was going to cry, but she didn't. She's, she was <laughs> brave, she's a brave girl. Um, <laughs> what you do then is you uh, let that dry. And once it's dry, you fold the top back over. You write your name, you, you know, your, your phone number on there. Then in the box, there's a test form. It's a test requisition form. So what you would do is you would, uh, you know, you, you fill that out, you know, on the first side, you fill that out with all your information. You, there is a symptomology here, so you can you know, just follow it and fill this in. Most of these symptoms really pertain if you were doing this for testing for hormones, but it's still a good idea to fill it in. On the back, if you had called Maria at our pharmacy uh, at Town & Country, we would already have filled in the uh, vitamin D on the back here, you know, uh, so that would be on the back to uh, alert the RT labs that you're testing your vitamin D level. Then once that is dried, it goes back into the box right here. You put your requisition form in. This will have now dried, so you have folded that back over. That goes all inside of the box. There's a plastic envelope in the box. I can show you that. Very simple. The box then gets placed into the plastic envelope here. There is a UPS label with shipping instructions. You just place the uh, label right on the plastic bag. It's all postage paid. Then you can, uh, if you have a UPS driver coming to your home, as we all do uh, recently with all the uh, orders that we've been getting into our home, you can give it to him, he or she, or you can just drop it off in one of the UPS drop-off boxes. Then again, we'll get that report sent to us probably within two weeks. And what we will do then is in, in, go over that with you. So the cost to do this at home is $80, which is pretty reasonable, and that includes a consultation with one of the pharmacists here to review the literature. When we get that test kit back in two weeks, we'll uh, get in touch with you via the email or over the phone, make arrangements to get on the phone with you. We will email you a copy that you can then share with, um, you know, your, your physician, and we will review it with you and kind of help you make a determination whether your vitamin D level is adequate or if you should be supplementing uh, with vitamin D and what would be an appropriate level of vitamin D to you for you to supplement with. And then certainly if you want to retest in uh, 90 days or so, it, it's a good idea then to see 
if you retest, did you get that vitamin D level above that 50 that we're shooting for? And if so, then you know you're at the uh, proper level of vitamin D. Thank you for joining us. And if you have any further questions, you know, call us here at Town & Country, 201-447-2020. You can review our uh, blog on vitamin D, uh, tccompound.com. And if you think this has been informational, please feel free to share it with your friends on Facebook. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.